Ladies and gentlemen, please stand to your feet. Let's give honor to who honor is due. Help me welcome God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selma. the Lord. Thank you. First, um, that's all right. First and foremost, my sincere apologies for just coming late. Thank you. Amen. And then, second of all, before we honor a bishop, let me appreciate every man and woman of God here. I notice there are several servants of God here. Let's just honor them. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Particularly, we honor the PFN chairman. Thank you, sir, for the sacrifice. Yeah. Then, please join me, honor Bishop and his dear wife. Very good people. God bless you, sir. Thank you. My heart has been in the meeting, and I know that our time is gone, so we'll have more time to um, exchange pleasantries tomorrow as God grants us grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to cry in one minute for a visitation from heaven. Lift your voice. Let it be a desperate cry. Father, visit me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you praying? Give me an encounter that will change my life forever. Give me an encounter by your spirit. Take my ministry to a higher dimension. Shalabranda katos yata hashab. Zekatos salabranda katos yata balaraba. Shalabaruta siyata balaraba. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb, glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. You are seated on the throne. One more time. tonight Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated if you can the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside with a loud shout please pick that lady and bring her here I know that our time is gone outside not just inside Sheila Sobran Dagados Psalm 92 and verse 10. Psalm 92, verse 10. Shali Parus I want to share 
very briefly on the subject of the anointing as I was given as a topic I believe that there is so much that the body of Christ needs to learn about the dynamics and the operation of the anointing whilst we commend the body of Christ for having gone far in understanding the ministry of the Holy Spirit I will respectfully observe that there is still a lot more about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the operations of the anointing and that is because many people are more interested in walking in it than studying it and so many people have experiences captured within their Christian life that they cannot explain they cannot give meaning they just know that people fall down in my meetings people shout I feel fire in my hands I feel cold I just know it is from the Holy Spirit and yet because we do not give attention to study these things there is hardly mastery as far as the operation of the anointing is concerned in our lives please when the power of God comes upon that lady outside um, I want you to bring her in I want to speak and I want to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing light just casting on this side and it's please hold on we're going to pray and it's an impartation it's a grace for the prophetic just on this row please bring them out I'm seeing a grace for the prophetic God wants to shift people into very strange dimensions in the spirit please bring them out you will never be the same Shalas Kobranda Gadusiata Shilebarutiasa for some of you, what you saw in your dreams are about happening. You've seen them in dreams and visions. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Again. Open up the doors. A new dimension is opening to someone in the spirit. Open up the my dear remember not the former things nor consider the things of old the spirit of God is saying behold I do a new thing please be careful with her don't drag her in the name of Jesus I declare for you and for your loved ones the old is rolled away like the curtain in the name of Jesus Christ and I cast away every spirit that impedes your growth and your advancement in this kingdom. I declare you are delivered now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bring the people laughing in the spirit. It's not just some religious gibberish. It is an operation of the spirit that I'm hoping at the end of this conference we will understand. It's a laughter in the spirit. Please bring them. The power of God will come upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just be patient with me a minute and we'll be seated. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. Let me prophesy to someone here. In the name of Jesus, I come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood. That every challenge that has stood before you, 
in the name of the Lord God whose I am it will fall like Dagon before the actor it will fall like Dagon before the act tonight. Hallelujah. Ebenezer. Who is Ebenezer? Ebenezer. You're wearing a blue and a cream shirt. Blue and cream. No. Blue and cream. It's like a short shirt. There is a blue patch and cream. Who is that? What is your name? Ebenezer. You're a member of this church? I want to pray for you. My friend, you love Jesus? The spirit of prayer and supplication is coming upon you. I stretch my hands. May that grace come upon you. Let it take you to untold dimensions in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, you receive of that grace. You will never be the same. My friend, I want to pray for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the Lord revealed me to you and I'm speaking to you for you and for your family. January is a season of strange breakthrough for your family. I release that grace upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and that everything that stands between you and prophecy, I clear it out of the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The healing anointing I don't know you, this gentleman. You are a man of God? Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is telling me that he's introducing you to a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And you will experience the healing power of Jesus in a strange way. Father, in the name of Jesus, a new grace, fresh dimension in the Spirit. Let this unction rest upon you and turn you into a sign and a wonder. Please be seated. God bless you. Psalm 92 and verse 10. Let's see how the Lord will help us. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Grant us illumination by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Conferences like these are opportunities by the grace of God to expose the body of Christ to dimensions of the kingdom. The kingdom is built and is made up of systems and God mandates that we study these operations one by one so that we can gain mastery and that our Christian lives will become fruitful and productive. It is for this cause that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers for the maturing of the saints. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 tells us that we are all called. Every believer in Christ is called. Please give it to us. The Bible says, Who hath saved us? and called us with an holy calling so every believer in christ is called for as long as you have been grafted into christ through the experience of the new birth the bible says that you are called you are called it's an initiation into a life of victory a life of purpose a life that represents the christ himself second peter 1 and verse 10 tells us that we are not only called but we are chosen and then it says that it is within our responsibility to give diligence look up please to make your calling and make your election the word election is still the word chosen are we together now that it is within your power and it's provable 
the times that we live in now will no longer allow noise and stories of a God who was and a historic God. We need to be able to demonstrate the reality of this life that we so propose. We've said so many things about God in conferences, in conventions. There are so many advocacies about who he is and what he can do. And then the world is standing in their arrogance and waiting and saying until you can demonstrate the validity of all you are talking we consider you noisemakers philosophers they say hallelujah in luke chapter 4 the bible says that jesus came to the temple and the scroll of esaias was given to him where he wrote the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 jesus speaking that scroll he began to read it before them that the spirit of the lord is upon me he said for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted he said to deliver them that are in bondage he said all those things i'm quoting that scripture and this guy is getting delivered now this one is the power of god this is not a sermon when he was done he said this day is this scripture fulfilled and he saw a woman with a withered hand and said if it is true that i am the messiah that is talked about let that reality be here and now madam stretch forth your hand the bible says that the greeks seek for a sign have you read that scripture that we live in a time where men and women will not just believe for nothing there has to be a dimension of the reality of God there is too much speaking too much speaking not teaching too much speaking propositions of what God can do God can do we wet the appetite of people like the fig tree and we cause them to come and they come there with nothing God is able to change your life we say I'm not being sarcastic God is able to lift you and many times we are well-meaning we don't mean to deceive them we are sincere but we go back and say God but why what is this what is this I gave my best I called for a healing meeting I called the sick to come they waited from morning till night and they went back I called sinners to come I told them there is a savior that can save and while I was teaching what I believe the Bible says is the power of God unto salvation that while that teaching is going on the sinners were watching like this unconverted untouched by the message are you blessed we propose that as believers and as men of God he has put something in our lips that when we utter words upon the lives of people we can create a system of blessing upon them but how many times do we continue to speak the Lord bless you the Lord lift you may your life change they say amen meaning they believe but they don't return with results can I tell you this there has to be a dimension of the grace of God that must be displayed in the land of Asaba to bring principalities and powers. Hear what I tell you. There has to be a dimension of the reality of the spirit that you will see people on the streets, conversions, a, 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 an effulgence of power that on Sunday the streets and the shops are closed because men and women will have to go to God there is there is a dimension of the power of the Spirit of God he said when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech because the morale is not to show you I'm a great orator but to demonstrate to you that there is a kingdom that is provable here and now why should I not go to a harbor list when I'm desperate for a solution and you told me that I should stay and go to God and I'm staying to God while my loved one is dying listen we have no right to question the alternatives until we demonstrate the authentic
right now it looks like a mockery when you say you are in ministry when you say you are a man of god this is what society interprets i am a nuisance to civilization i am a nuisance to intellectualism i am a nuisance to to sociological development we are this group of religious bigots that have come to interrupt status quo when has it been that the church is said that you are the light of the world that means the definition of darkness is a territory without the church when a man of god comes to a house and knocks and says peace be unto you the people in the house are already offended because in their mind they feel this this money grabbers have come with their false and negative prophecies to mislead us and collect money oh come on please that there is a dimension of grace that as you are knocking at the door of someone without knowing what the problem is the spiritual climate that you carry is announcing something to the realm of the spirit that the age-long captivity that that family is under should go can i tell you this the lifetime of transformation when you see jesus you need only one encounter there were few times in scripture where people had to encounter him twice to be transformed one solid genuine encounter please sit down so the bible says we are called everybody say i am called you are a believer in christ according to the authority of scripture it says you are called it's a holy calling the bible says but then the bible says just proposing that you are called will not bring god glory and that our lives will continue to be barren like the fig tree then he says give us that scripture again first timothy second timothy second peter sorry one and verse ten it says wherefore help us second peter one and verse ten media wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make now women understand this when they say make rice that means take responsibility and bring together the ingredients if i say madam make for me fried rice the first assignment of that woman is to go to the market was that not what he said go and buy from them that sell that means there are people that sell it if, if you are desperate enough there are men who have been custodians of that dimension you seek the parable of the ten virgins he said go the one we have is not enough go to the market there are people who sell it buy from them you don't buy with money you buy with meekness you buy with honor you buy with discernment that you can carry the currency of meekness the currency of honor the currency of discernment to say i discern that you are one of the privileged stewards that has been given this to sell to give to make available so he says make your calling and your election sure man of god make your calling and your election sure believer make your calling that means when this word comes your first assignment is what are the ingredients required to make this ministry potent oh god you called me into a prophetic ministry every prophecy i've given people said is a lie i must go back to the drawing room in the spirit what are the graces what are the dimensions of light i need to form that ministry to make my calling and my election sure you've called me to be a kingdom financier there is a dimension of kingdom wealth i do not know my life continues to represent failure even though i am called so when men doubt your call don't be afraid their 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 doubt should push you to go back and say lord these people are justified until my results proves otherwise are we blessed lord you have called me to demonstrate the reality of the spirit to a territory and yet darkness continues to loom across that territory even with my presence 
that means i need to go back to the drawing board in the spirit with the assignment to make my calling and my election sure don't forget this message tonight is a message that cultures responsibility that waiting for god to just anoint you arbitrarily waiting for prophecy to find its way to happen you will wait forever you have to take responsibility tonight and say in the name of jesus i will find whatever the ingredients are i will pay that price go and buy from them that sell Go and buy from them that sell. There are stewards who have been given this assignment. Hallelujah. You have malls within your town. And when you want to buy household products, you don't go to a carpenter. For instance, when you want to buy food ingredients, there are people who sell food. And sometimes you are even fortunate they have a place designated already to make it easy for you. When you go to ShopRite or any of your malls, they, they even label it for you to make your search easy. That if what you want, uh, beverages and so on and so forth, there is a plethora of them for your choice. That means if your calling and your election is not sure, it's accredited to pride, lack of discernment, lack of meekness, and maybe sheer laziness. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of revelation we seek, to represent Christ to his fullness is available within the body but it does not come to you you search the proof of passion is pursuit that when you are passionate about a dimension and a thing you seek it I believe in the name of Jesus that your coming and your sacrifice to sit in and outside is proof that you are tired of your current level and that you desire something that is real and provable to come upon your life. I believe that the, the, the Holy Spirit is in partnership with our bishop and the men and women of God within this city to say Maranatha, let a new dimension of glory come. Let a new dimension of power come. Let a new dimension of the investment of the Spirit upon this land come come Lord Jesus come come revival come come signs and wonders come come salvation come come baptisms come come revelation and spiritual intelligence there has to be a people it is the spirit and the bride that says come it is not only the spirit alone the spirit can say come and the bride in Asaba is refusing to echo that same word when the spirit says come the bride must also say come the spirit and the bride say come are we blessed so this conference is an attempt to bring to our lives one of the major ingredients that can help a believer make his calling and his election sure now does it does it make sense to you what i'm teaching because just teaching about the anointing arbitrarily is what has produced the immaturity that we see in the body of christ today because people have access to dimensions of grace without purpose they do not even know to what end it is so there, there is a a display and a galore of flesh but when we connect these teachings to kingdom come and to a bigger spiritual cause then you now see that your desiring the anointing has now come under alignment to a greater cause to see Christ revealed to see Christ glorified more than just making a name that Lord I love you so much I want to see your life and your glory lifted and 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 revealed within my territory according to Galatians 1 24 that man will glorify God in me and because of that agenda to prove to creation that you are God to be a witness indeed a validator of your power your grace it is for that reason that I seek the anointing it is for that reason that I fast it is for that reason that I pray because I love you and I want to see creation give you glory that it will not be in my lifetime that people will say where is this God are we blessed the anointing
when Jesus began to mentor the disciples isn't it amazing men of God that when you read the Gospels you will hardly aside from the recitation of the messianic prophecy you don't hear the mention of the anointing there you don't even hear the mention of spiritual power there are few times Jesus talked about that because the major ingredient was to supply spiritual knowledge he knew that introducing them to the anointing would destroy them and so he kept them to mentor them because the anointing reflects your level of spiritual illumination when you get the anointing and your mind is not transformed the the way you will operate will make it look as though it's the anointing making you behave that way and yet it is lack of transformation so the more transformed you are the more you are giving the anointing space to find expression are we blessed the anointing what is the anointing let's define it and then we'll just share a few things thank you Jesus <laughs> Isaiah 10 27 Isaiah 10 27 please give it to us media help us and it shall come to pass in that day someone say this is that day that his burden shall be taken from off your shoulder read with me please and his yoke from off thy neck uh-huh and the yoke shall be destroyed because that when you introduce something to that yoke the yoke will be destroyed the yoke does not get destroyed on its own but there is a spiritual factor that when you introduce to that yoke the bible says the yoke is destroyed and the reason is because of the anointing please write this down the anointing is a system of ordination and authorization the anointing is a spiritual system of ordination and authorization you may want to write the anointing legitimizes your representing God on earth the anointing has nothing to do with oil necessarily the anointing has nothing to do with touching people's head the anointing is a spiritual system that was invented by the intelligence of God as a system of ordination legitimizing your representing him on earth so that all the powers of darkness and indeed creation will respond to you because they know that you are operating on legal grounds you were authorized so he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he had ordained me he had authorized my operation hallelujah you have I, I saw a few security people outside when a military man wears his uniform that uniform is a system of authorization is that true it legitimizes him you don't find a military man in his uniform holding a rifle and then you question him because the uniform permits that he holds a rifle but when you just see an ordinary man like that you have to go to the court of law to verify whether that territory allows the use of rifles so when you walk to creation and say seek be healed blind eyes open destinies be transformed believers i supply you light the realm of the spirit will ask you back where is your authorization because as as creation we were designed to obey but not obey everyone we obey people that carry a badge of authorization and we see this in jesus we see this in paul but all oh, sons of skiva where is your authorization so it's not just enough to speak it's not just enough to do ministry the anointing therefore is God's way of legitimizing your operations on earth. God's way of legitimizing your representing him. Are we together? Yes.
and the bible tells us theologically speaking that there are two dimensions of the anointing the first according to scripture sorry i'm rushing because i want us to close on time first john chapter 2 and verse 27 it is called the anointing that is within you it says but the anointing which you have received that means you were not born with it you have received of him abided in you and ye need ye need not that any man teach you do you know what that means look up please that there is an anointing you receive that becomes an authorization for the holy spirit to carry out his ministry in your life and build you when you read isaiah 61 is a very interesting rendition that many of us may not have paid attention to it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me so when you read it well you will say because he has anointed me the spirit of the lord has now come upon me are you getting the word now it is not just that the spirit of the lord brought the anointing that there was an authorization that allowed him on legal grounds to come to my life and the bible says that one of those anointings is the anointing within and that the assignment please keep that scripture that the assignment of that anointing is to make sure that you are enlightened spiritually that that anointing is responsible for delivering to you all of the spiritual packages that are responsible for your personal growth this is not the anointing for ministry this is not the anointing for your office it is because of this anointing that you can place a demand and say let scripture be opened there is an anointing within you that is responsible for your growth back to the scripture please help us it says that what the anointing teaches you is true so it is an anointing within you that drives you to fast for three days and you are just fasting it is part of your spiritual growth processes there is an anointing within you that compels the holy spirit to drive you to go to church to come for fellowship i was glad when they said to me there is an anointing that causes that gladness are we together but the second dimension of the anointing the investment of god's power that it comes upon you and it is primarily to equip you for kingdom service acts chapter 1 and verse 8 but you shall receive power he says after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power that comes upon you will make you witnesses validators it will make you prove the reality of my existence witnesses unto me in jerusalem please give us acts chapter 1 and verse 8 in judea in samaria it says and unto the uttermost part of the earth that is the anointing that comes upon you and empowers you to represent the purposes of christ as a businessman as a student as a minister of the gospel as a politician one in government it doesn't matter what is the geography of your assignment that when the power and the anointing that is upon you it legitimizes your operation you can represent the purposes of god in its fullness the anointing is responsible for results in the life of a believer please understand this when you find believers that produce uncommon results in their personal spiritual growth and as far as representing the purposes of god are concerned that there is an unction there is an anointing from heaven in fact in ancient times you never sent anyone to do any assignment for the kingdom remember again you find it in exodus you find it in leviticus again and again call aaron and call his sons and anoint them every time god found a man to use him he would use the priest or the prophet to anoint that person through the medium of oil that when that oil comes upon that person the spirit of god will come and empower that person 
to walk in supernatural dimensions and in the name of Jesus Christ the anointing for your destiny will locate you this night and rest upon your life and turn you into a sign and a wonder yeah. now please sit down the anointing is responsible for efficiency in this kingdom you cannot be efficient until the requisite level of the anointing is upon you God has called you into a ministry you cannot be efficient until the requisite level of the anointing comes upon you God has called you into business and finances you cannot be efficient until the requisite level of grace is upon you look at me please when you see people do uncommon things it is because there is a dimension of grace that is not given to men or not fabricated by men that is upon them you may want to write this definition of the anointing therefore that the anointing is God's ability a second definition the anointing is God's ability at work in a human or material vessel God's ability at work in a human or material vessel causing that vessel to produce God's dimension of results God's ability at work in a human or material vessel causing that vessel to produce God's dimension of results are we together as a normal human being you cannot speak to someone and say in the name of Jesus go return with a result you don't have that power as a human as a, as a natural man it is not given to you but there is an engracing from heaven that can come upon you and when you speak is as though it is God speaking and because he's the one who has empowered you he will back what you have said and ensures that the people return with the results as spoken Genesis 21 and verse 1 please give it to us Genesis 21 and verse 1 let's read it together if we can see it Genesis 21 and verse 1 please read with me one to read and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said uh-huh and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken so he said it and then he did it the anointing is the doing agency of the spirit that is more than just saying it when you say it, there is an agency that goes to work that anointing that God speaks to you and say in the name of Jesus I will give you your space Rehoboth within this city and when he speaks the anointing moves and begins to shift systems and structures until that which was spoken the anointing has an assignment to ensure do you know the anointing is like a messenger the word of God carries it the word of God is like a tray a tray does not carry nothing a tray carries something when you want to serve me water and you want to show that you honor me you don't hold the water in a cup you take it in a tray is that true a tray can carry many things it can carry rice or swallow it can carry water it can carry juice so when I see a tray coming I start rejoicing because I know something is on that tray are you getting now this is a union between the word and the anointing for a very long time in the body of Christ we have been confused as to the synergy of the operation of what we call the word of God and the anointing so we have sects that believe the anointing it's not just about the word of God is anointing and there are others that say forget all that nonsense is the word that created the heavens and the earth both of them are not wrong they are just incomplete the word of God is the tray that carries all of the spiritual packages. So when you see the word of God coming to you, you know. Are we together now? Yes. The anointing. When he sends his word, 
a messenger is coming to you coming to you with packages coming to you with spiritual things God's ability let me tell you this brothers and sisters God will never give you an assignment on earth that is normal for mere men to do you know it is God speaking when your power cannot do it when you hear something that is within your power to do it's just your mind speaking to you when God is speaking he will say have you built the church this is God speaking God speaks to men like he's speaking to himself Bishop he doesn't speak to men like he's speaking to men because it is his ability that will make it come to pass so he will say go to that family tear down the hands of darkness uproot overturn and reveal Jesus and you are wondering this is a hundred year captivity over that family it's because you are looking at yourself oh warm jacob but there is an ability from heaven that can rest upon you and you go as one sent that i am a messenger and you open that door and they say who are you oh jesus you are only 33 years old and he says no what is upon me is ancient that there are men and women here who will carry graces and for some of you by tomorrow when you come to stand behind your pulpit they think it's the pastor of last week about to preach two weeks ago you said be blessed and they came back with nothing and you're about to say it again master we have toiled all night but you were toiling in the flesh nevertheless the messenger is coming coming with something that can make you catch abundance of fish listen let me tell you this we're about to pray shortly when the lord began to train me and build me in ministry he opened my eyes to see the futility of doing ministry in the flesh i found out that if i continue to do ministry in the flesh it will make you angry jealous you will fight people you will be a nuisance to the advancement of god's kingdom and so among the many things that he taught me he said contend with the anointing until you take something that is provable to a generation and let me tell you this you will not always have the time to press the way you are pressing now so whatever sacrifice you can give to it press before the invitations start coming press before the crusades start coming don't experiment when you're on stage men are too impatient to give you a second chance go back to the secret place do your homework that when you come out in the spirit and the power of god you will be able to validate the reality of the life and the power of god i am grateful to god today with all humility that he granted me the patience to stay until he came listen please don't be offended this anointing thing bar if it's there it is there if it is not there it's as simple and honest as that When you ask a woman who is a chef madam please make fried rice all she needs from you is time she, you you can guarantee that that meal is coming if you ask me now to cook for you as anointed as i am uh, there is going to be a discussion between me and god this night <laughs> we'll have to walk around angels to come and help me after all they made bread so they, 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 they can they can walk around and cook but in my own strength whatever you see there you just take it because there is no mastery i have not paid the price to gain mastery in that area but you come to any of our mothers and say mothers we want to eat this tomorrow they start laughing you never see them say i hope will not the people will not the issue of disappointment is out of the the question this is what I want you to get into in the spirit. That you can get to a point where when people come to meet you, when they see you as a man of God, they start rejoicing. Because they can say in the name of Jesus, we know that this challenge truly has come to end. Hallelujah. 
a man of God wants package a seed to sow into my life and I told him for what he said for increase I said if you don't rise come back and collect your money because that would be a scam that would be that I cheated you if you actually carry your seed believing that I'm a representative of the kingdom and you sow it and you go back and nothing happens I deceived you come back and collect your money with honor the anointing is in levels and the anointing is in dimensions I may not have all the time to teach everything but I need to say this so that we'll start praying please listen the anointing is in levels that means two people can have the same kind of anointing maybe a healing anointing or a prophetic anointing but it is in levels are we together now Ezekiel 47 that he took me and showed me a river that came from the north of the, the east side of the temple and he began to list levels the similitude of the anointing that means that means that a number of people can be called into the same operation but the level they have pressed into i wish i had time to walk this please one person come any one person look at this everybody look at this if this brother has god forbid say a cause in his life okay and this guy is suffering from delay and this guy is suffering from sickness are we together and this guy is suffering from oppression there is need for breakthrough how many of you know that he needs the power of god in his life is that true now if i come as a man of god pastors lend this this is a, a big revelation if i meet this person i will tell him in the name of jesus be free from that oppression now watch this every dimension of problem in his life has a level of anointing that takes it away so while you are praying generically are we together now the anointing that is upon you starts scanning through the problems in his life and only solves the one that is within his level for instance please you have to understand this let's assume I want to use monetary value so that we can understand let's assume that this man his headache requires 1000 naira worth of the anointing i hope you understand what i'm saying just for and he has a problem of delay and that problem of delay will require a 50,000 naira worth of the anointing and as a man of god i come with 3000 naira worth of anointing now i am anointed while i pray for him the only problems that will be solved in his life are the problems that are below my level of anointing this is the mystery behind certain conditions that seem not to change every challenge is at the mercy of the level of grace that confronts it this is why although you are anointed god still says rise higher because as more members are coming the challenges that they are bringing your current level of grace may not be able to solve it so he said grow he said grace and peace be multiplied to you you know the kind of anointing you carry by the testimonies that recycle in your life there are certain testimonies that just does not seem to happen but when you contend in the secret place suddenly newer dimensions of results an upgrade has happened to you in the spirit and when god wants to lift you higher he will organize conferences like this he says for i long to see you that i may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end my goal is your establishment hallelujah and part of the apostolic and prophetic ministry is vested by grace through the election of grace are we together now to supply to the body of christ and to territories the dimensions that are either missing or weak as far as their establishment is concerned so it is part of the apostolic ministry by the spirit to scan to a territory and see the graces that are absent or the graces that are not in sufficiency and then by the supply of the spirit provide that dimension so that the testimonies that were not heard will now be heard if this does not happen we only waste our time in conferences
Are we blessed? So after conferences like this, we hear that fire is burning in church A and demons move to church B for refuge. Before they get there, fire is also burning there. It's like beacons of fire. This is how you drive spirits out of a territory because spirits don't leave a territory. They move from a place of comfort to a place of comfort. When every place is on fire, they will have no option than to leave. So you will find out that certain widespread vices suddenly begin to leave. A particular region, smoking for instance, prostitution or whatever, and you find out that after a while, these spirits move to a, another region. And you find out that that region is already manifesting those qualities. Young men who were not seen to smoking before, suddenly the devil gets one envoy and he begins to initiate others. Then suddenly another kind happens. But when there is fire burning, all of a sudden you will hear that, ah, the police has arrested a group of thugs that disturb a territory. Sanity is now returning. And you hear that there are prayer groups that are rising. Young boys who just feel, let's be spending three hours on top.